Hello, I'm Dr. Ravi Kiran Barikala. I'm an infectious disease specialist at Apollo Hospital, Jubilee Hills, Hyderabad. And I will be talking today about dengue and what are the symptoms and what are the problems associated with dengue, what are some of the treatments and how do you diagnose it. Thank you. So dengue is a, a mosquito-borne illness. It's actually a viral illness which is transmitted by some of the special types of mosquitoes. When they bite a person who already has dengue, it will be transmitted to somebody else and they go and bite to somebody else that that's when it is transmitted some of the risk factors could be having some of those pots in your house or some plants wherever there's water collecting and the mosquitoes will breathe there and then they will go and bite other people and from them they'll bite somebody else and that's how it will spread So among the options that you have listed, hair loss is not one of the options which is seen in dengue. Dengue is an acute condition which lasts for a few days to maybe one or two weeks. It does not last a long time. When you expect hair loss is in conditions when there is a long time of illness, maybe weeks and months, that's the time you would see a lot of hair loss. In this condition, I wouldn't expect any hair loss. You can have any of the other symptoms but not hair loss. So I'll just speak a little bit about dengue and what are some of the symptoms of dengue. It's a very common illness as we know it. We see thousands and lakhs of cases every year in India. And some of the common symptoms of dengue are fever, body pains, rash, nausea, vomiting, headaches, dizziness. So fever also could be something very sim small or simple like 99 or 100 degrees but it could also go up to something very high like 103, 104 and associated with that you might have a lot of body pains or chills with it so you might feel very weak um, and the fever goes up and when you take the medicines it might come down. Uh, it takes a few hours for the fever to come down and once the fever comes down you still don't feel completely normal you still kind of feel a little bit weak a uh, little dehydrated uh, you may feel dizzy because of the dehydration you may not want to eat much because the dengue can affect your appetite sometimes it can affect your liver because of which your appetite can also be low if uh, it is making your stomach very sick you might even have some nausea and vomiting uh, rarely diarrhea can be seen that too uh, sometimes we see a rash which is seen all over the body which is more of a reddish type of rash it's not like pimples or anything it's just this whole skin becomes just a little bit more pinkish or reddish in a darker skin individual we may not necessarily appreciate that um, in a darker skin it might the skin might look a little bit more darker than usual and some other symptoms that we might see which are more serious is if you don't eat or if the platelets start dropping then it might become more serious you might need to go to the hospital and get more treatments at that time some things which are more of a warning sign are if you're very very sick that you will not be able to have any energy when go to the bathroom you won't be able to eat anything everything you are eating you'll be having vomiting you have severe nausea vomiting not eating anything and some other things are completely like a shock where you are almost unconscious at that time, you definitely need to be in the emergency room, get to the hospital right away and get some treatments right away. So dengue is not a contagious disease per se, but it does transmit from one person to another through a mosquito bite. So let's say I have dengue, somebody who's right next to me taking care of me, they are not going to get dengue just by being next to me. So it is not transmitted directly from a person to person like what we would see in like COVID, or some other infectious disease which are spread by being close to somebody. So this is not something that is spread by contact or through air between a person to person. So some of the things that we should not do in any condition and even in dengue especially is that we should not do self-medication. Self-medication is very harmful. Let's say you have dengue and then you go to a, just a regular medical shop, you say I have fever, they might give you some medications. They may not necessarily know what you have. Um, 
and some of the medicines which they might give can actually make your problems worse like there's a class of medications called NSAIDs which uh, can also decrease your platelets or increase your chances of bleeding if something like that happens then it is very very dangerous you might actually make the problem much worse than what it actually is so don't go and just take some medications by its yourself like you may also have some medications at home you may not necessarily know what is in that medicines like a lot of people think it's just a paracetamol but paracetamol is given also with many other combinations of medicines too there may be paracetamol but something else along with it and that may be dangerous for you and you might also not know if it's paracetamol enough or is there something else that you need or some other tests so unless you do some testings and get some advice you may not get some correct treatment so some of the different treatment options that are there for the most of them just home treatment is enough so adequate hydration is important good food and nutrition is important and rest is very very important and some of the other things are based upon um, how severe it is so to, to know that you will do some blood test the most common blood test that we do is to check your platelet levels so if the platelets are low even if you are feeling fine you would need to be hospitalized if their platelets are okay your fevers are not too bad you're eating fine then you can be monitored at home so i would say probably 80 to 90 percent of the people can be managed at home without any hospitalizations so i hospitalize people if they have these symptoms if they are unable to eat much if they are not able to walk much if their fevers are too high or if their platelets are falling too fast or if they are less than 50000 or so at that time i would put them in the hospital So the test which is used for diagnosing dengue is NS1. So dengue NS1 is a test that is positive only in the first few days of the infection. And it may not be positive in the first one or two days. So it will be positive after the second or third day. And it will be positive for probably of five days or so. So it's like a curve. It slowly rises up and then it falls down. That's the dengue curve, uh, NS1 curve. Whereas the IgM starts a few days later, maybe after the fifth day to the seventh day, then it starts rising up. It will stay positive for about a week or so, maybe even 10 days, and then it will also go down. And finally, the IgM, after it goes down, then the IgG starts rising up. So after a couple of weeks or so, then the IgG starts showing up. So in dengue, multiple organs can be affected. Any part of the body actually could be affected, but there are some parts of the body which are unlikely to be affected, which is eyes. So typically what we would see is just the muscles are the most common, the soft tissues are the most common ones that are affected. But if you could have effect on also the liver, that's when you start having some nausea, vomiting, sometimes even jaundice is seen. Um, your lungs could be affected, not, commonly but sometimes if they are in the ICU they are really sick that's when their breathing starts getting affected it could affect your heart which is called as myocarditis which means uh, the heart gets inflammation and your heart beats or your uh, the way that the heart pumps can be affected it can even affect your brain then you start getting confused um, or you lose consciousness or you have seizures so almost any part can be affected but Typically, we would not see the eyes being affected, like the vision would not get affected. You would not have like blurry vision or black spots anywhere in your vision. That is not seen in dengue. Stay informed, stay safe. Always consult your doctor for accurate medical advice and information about any of these treatment options. Thank you. Namaste.